Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to discuss how we can use and work with safe areas in Swift UI. So before jumping into the code I just want to discuss what safe areas is in the Apple Human Interface Guidelines. So to learn more about the Apple Human Interface Guidelines check out my video breaking down the Apple Human Interface Guidelines. If we just go into the HIG you'll notice here that we have a section in visual design called Ad Adaptivity and Layout and what this will do is it'll actually tell us about all the different sizes that we can actually build and design for in landscape and portrait mode for iPad and iPhones. But what I want to do is to scroll down and if you just go past, past the auto layout section, you'll notice that there's a section here called layout guides and safe areas. So what is a safe area? Well, this blue box here is the safe area on this device. So on certain devices with a notch, you'll see here that you actually have this white space here. And this is areas where you're not actually able to place your content because they may overlap. So in iOS, what it does, it provides you with areas that you're able to place your views within. So this blue box here, is the safe area for an iPhone and also this blue area here is the safe area for an iPhone in landscape. So you can see here, this is where you place stuff. Also as well, starting with iOS 15, if scrolling down, you'll notice that the keyboard layout guide actually has its own area where it actually lays out the keyboard and gets its own space. And this actually causes the safe area to decrease as well because of this. And when the keyboard's been dismissed, the actual area for the keyboard layout guide is actually this bottom safe area layout here as well. So what we're going to do now after breaking that down and seeing where the actual safe area is, we're going to go into code now and actually just add in a view and see how it actually responds to being laid out within the safe area. So now let's look at how we can work with the safe area and also ignore it as well. So I'm going to add in a text view within a stack and give it a background of a gradient and a title. And if you want to learn more about gradients, then check out my video gradients in Swift UI. So first of all, let's create a property for storing our gradient colors at the root of our strut. So what I've said here, if we've just got our own custom gradient and this is the gradient color where it's going to go from blue to red. So now we'll actually create a private extension within our view to define our background view that we're going to use for our screen. So let's do that now. So now we have a background view and we're just defining here a linear gradient and the colors is going to go from blue to red, like I said before, and it's going to start from the top and go all the way down to the bottom. So this is the background view that we're going to add within our screen to cover this area here. So you should see it covering the safe area. So let's actually add in our views and then we'll break it down. Okay, cool. So as you can see now, we've added in a navigation view and this gives us the ability to give our view a navigation title to give it some more context. And then we've got ourselves a, a Z stack. So our Z stack within it has a background view, which is the first view that it lays out as you can see. And then on top of our background view within our Z stack, we're adding a text here which says content it's just bold so as you can see because we've added in our z stack and um, with our background view it's actually not filling out the entire screen here and that's because it's being cut off at the safe area layout so because we've got our navigation view in this also gets added into the safe area where you're not able to touch it but what about if we actually wanted to make this gradient actually span the entire screen well, we're able to use a modifier. We're able to use a modifier available to us called ignore safe area layouts. Now, you may see some instances where people um, do it like this, but I would actually argue that it may not make sense to actually add it onto the Z stack because we don't want the Z stack to ignore the safe area. Uh, what we want is specifically our background view to just ignore the safe area. So let's actually remove this from our Z stack. And instead of adding it there, we're going to add it onto our gradient like so. So now by us using the ignore safe area modifier, what we're saying here is we don't want our gradient to actually conform to sitting within that safe area layout. We just want it to fill up the entire screen, which is why you get this effect now. But what about if we actually want to control specifically the edges that we want to ignore? So what we could do is we actually could get our gradient to ignore the bottom but not the top. So in order to do that, what we need to do on our ignore safe area is you actually have two parameters. And if we just look at the documentation for it, you can actually specify the regions that you want it to cover. So by default, this is set to all, and we'll get into what all means later in a bit. And you can also specify the edges. So the region that we want to cover is our container 
So the container is just this area layout on the screen that we went through before and the edges that we want it to is the bottom. So let's do that now. As you can see here, we're saying that we only want this to be applied to the container and by saying just the container, it won't actually apply this onto the keyboard safe area that we discussed before. So we're saying here that we want the edges for it to cover is the bottom, as you can see, and that's why the top is still white. So this is how you can actually control specifically where you want it to control it. And if we wanted to, we could actually pass in an array here like so, and say something like dot top. And as you can see by specifying it in the array like so, this will now fill the whole screen. Ignore this error. This is the system of Swift UI being silly. So cool, you can see here that there's no errors and it's fine. But what we're going to do is just remove this and instead we're just going to say that we want it to specifically to fill the bottom like so. Now if we wanted to, we could actually specify how we want our app to interact if there is a keyboard on the screen. Right now we've specified how we want our view to be laid out in its container. But for the keyboard, we're actually going to look at a different example. Because I want to see how we can actually interact with the keyboard safe area layout. So in order to do that, we're just going to change this example and instead we're going to give ourselves a scroll view because the keyboard safe area layout is better to be seen when you're working with lists. So I'm just going to delete this and then we'll just type out some stuff and break it down. What we've got here is we still got our background view as you can see and we've now got our scroll view here. And this scroll view is what we're going to use to scroll through all the content on the screen. And we just got our text within the scroll view. We've also got a text field as well. And we just have a for each loop that's actually looping through the number zero to 15, which are uniquely being identified by themselves. And we're just going to show some text on the screen here. So you can see that we can actually scroll through all of this now. Now, in order to actually see this in action with what I want to show you, you need to actually run this on a simulator. So let's run it on a simulator first. Okay, cool. So now we've got this running on our simulator. So if you actually just tap on the text field, and if you're not seeing it, then just go to input keyboard and then let's just toggle this on and off. Cool. So you should see the system keyboard show up. And as you can see here now, our actual view, so our save area, like I said before, has now shrunken to accommodate the size of our keyboard. So it automatically handles that for us. So this actually stops our keyboard from overlapping on top of our scroll view, like so. But in some cases, I'm not too sure why, but if you're someone who wants to do this, well, what you can do is you can actually ignore this and actually, actually allow the keyboard to actually cover the whole screen. So this is a really unique edge case if this is something that you specifically want to do. So what we're going to do is see how to do that. On our Z stack, we actually want to give it the modifier to ignore the safe area layout for the keyboard. Now, you don't want to apply this onto the gradient because the gradient isn't the view that holds this text field. So let's go onto our Z stack. And after our navigation title, we're just going to type ignore safe area. And then for the regions, we're going to specify, key, specify keyboard. And then for the edges, we're just going to specify bottom. So now if you run this, you should notice that this time our view isn't being resized and instead it's actually covering our whole view. So we've actually disabled the ability to actually get the keyboard to automatically size our views. But like I said before, you probably don't want to do this because now as you can see, I'm not actually able to see all the bottom items of the list. I, I'm not able to access them. So I'm not too sure the edge case of where you want to use this, but it's just good to know that this is available if you did want to use it. So rather than having our safe area um, adjust to the keyboard and only fill the bottom, let's just remove this. So let's just comment this out. And then we're going to comment out this as well here. And then instead, we're just going to say ignores safe area. And we're just going to run this. And as you can see, our gradient is now filling up our whole screen. And when we tap on our text field, our scroll view automatically adjusts and takes into account the keyboard being visible on the screen. Now, if we wanted to, we could actually add content within our safe area. So in this next example, let's actually add a button into the bottom right-hand corner here, and we'll also create a new list of numbers on the screen. So let's create a new SwiftUI file. And we'll call this numbers list. And then what I'm just going to do is create a navigation view with a list that goes through zero to 20. 
And then I'm just going to stop this run on the simulator. And I'm just going to get our SwiftUI preview back. So as you can see, when you run this in your SwiftUI preview, you should just see a list that just goes through 0 to 20 and just displays some numbers on the screen. But what we want to do is we actually want to place a plus button in the bot bottom right hand corner, like I said before. So in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is actually create our button and extension. So we just got our button now, and this button is using an SF symbol, and we're just applying some styles onto it. So in order for us to actually apply and add this button into the bottom right hand corner, we actually need to use the safe area inset modifier on our list. So let's do that now. So if you just en hit enter after navigation title and just say safe area inset, you'll notice that you have quite a few options here. If you just hit enter on this one here. What we want to do is specify an edge of bottom because we want this to be in the bottom safe area layout guide. And then we want the alignment to be trailing because we want it to be on the right hand side. And then for now, I'm just going to delete spacing because we'll come to that in a second. And then for content, we're just going to hit enter. And then now we get this closure where we can actually put our button within the view. So within here, we're just going to type out plus button like so. And now when you update your SwiftUI preview, you'll notice that you now have a button on the right hand side on the bottom. And when you scroll down, it just it's just being pinned and just covering our list. But you can see it's quite tight to the right hand side. So we're going to add some trailing onto it. So within here, I'm just going to say dot padding dot trailing. Cool. And now that's being pushed to the right hand side more. And to learn more about padding, then you should check out my video, Padding in Swift UI. Now, if we wanted to, we're able to change the position of our button to be in the center as well. So what we could do is rather than this being trailing, I could actually change this to center. And this will go into the middle. And I could also change it to leading and it should go to the left. Cool. So as you can see, you can easily create a floating button, you know, similar to like you see on apps like Twitter or, you know, Google apps by just simply using the safe area inset modifier. But what we can also do as well is control the space between our safe area inset and the content view above it. And we can do this by using the spacing modifier. So after our alignment, if we just add in the spacing parameter like so, and if we just add in an exaggerated amount, such as 200. So when you run this on the SwiftUI preview, you'll notice that nothing has changed. But if you scroll all the way down now to the bottom, you'll see now that you actually have a lot more extra space at the bottom. And this is because we've said that we want our safe area inset to have an additional 200 space. So if you went to add in like some kind of custom view, like maybe a, you know, restore purchases view or some kind of terms and conditions, you could easily lay this out at the bottom by modifying the spacing and also adding it to the safe area inset. So it's always pinned to the bottom of the screen. Now let's actually change this back to zero so we can see what it looks like. I can see here when we change it back to zero, the spacing that we had before has now disappeared. And if we wanted to as well, we could also add in a side menu to the left hand side here. So like I said before, we specified here that we wanted our safe area inset edge to be bottom. But what if we wanted to, we could actually specify this to be top uh, trailing or leading. But what we're going to say is leading. So we can actually add in a sidebar here. So first of all, let's create a sidebar in our extension. So this is just a simple V stack with a for each that's just looping through some strings and just showing some text on the screen. And then after our safe area inset, rather than us using a bottom configuration, we're now going to choose leading and we're going to set the alignment of it to be to the top. So we just type out safe area inset. And then for the edge, we're going to say leading because we want our sidebar to be on the left hand side. And then alignment, we're going to say top because we want our content to start from the top of the screen. And then for spacing, we're going to specify zero because we don't want any extra space between the left hand side and numbers list. And then for content, we're just going to type in here sidebar. And I'm just going to clean this up so it's clearer to see. Sweet. So now you can see here that we actually have a sidebar on the left hand side of our list because it's being inserted on the leading edge. And if just to show you the effect that this has specifically, if I actually took this out, 
you'll see that this is actually centered and that's because by default the alignment is always the center so if you want it to be in the center you could have it like this or you could change it to you know top we could change this to bottom if we wanted to we could even switch this to go onto the right hand side by specifying trailing and you can now see that they've both swapped around you can easily add views into the safe area to create you know really custom and easy um, like sidebars or floating buttons cool so that's everything in this video if you enjoyed it i'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below also as well if you haven't already i'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as hitting the subscription button and a notification bell to get updates whenever i release a new video that's everything from me i'll catch you on a bit deuces